To this piece of crap. Oh, I kind of gave the whole rest of the video away. Uh, but why is it a piece of crap? We'll get into that. But before we do, I'd like to say don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell so you can keep informed of new videos warning you of pieces of crap like this. But let's get into why this is a piece of crap. First, let's unbox it because this definitely, yes, spoiler, I've already been in this box, I've already turned it on, I've already used it. It doesn't warrant an unboxing video by itself. This is the Pow Kitty X2. Pow Kitty makes a lot, they're a Chinese company who makes a lot of retro Chinese handhelds. There's not much on the box. I mean, it's got this design here that is pixelated to all hell, so they did a crappy job on the box. Of course, in shipping, even though they packed the crap out of this, I will give them that. This was completely wrapped in bubble wrap, and then there was another layer over that, and still somehow the box got destroyed. Maybe that box was already like that when they shipped it out. As you can see on the side here, there's a bunch of Chinese lettering, and that, uh, why am I gonna even try to pronounce that, but it looks like it says Shenzhen Pow Kitty Network Technology Company. I guess that's their whole business name. And it's got a bunch of Chinese stuff. You have www.powkitty.com. Uh, you have an eight gig, 16 gig, and 32. I'm gonna guess this is an eight gig. Let's get this open. Throw this to the side for now. Open the rest of the box and yep, that's all you get. No headphones, no case, no screen protector, just a micro USB, at least it's that and not a mini USB. You get this game machine product warranty card, which I guess you keep, I don't even know what the heck that is. You got this that says pass, I don't know what it passed, it definitely wasn't quality control, although that's what it says, and we'll get into that in a minute. And you got the manual here, matters needing attention, do not hit the main engine, seriously? What? Do not contact with benzene thinner and other chemicals. Isn't that so, isn't that common sense? Please keep away from strong magnetic field and power plants. Please avoid direct light or heater. Oh my God. The basic functions, 260,000 color, full color, high speed TFT display, supports mp3, supports mp4, supports NES 8-bit games, I'm guessing that's Mega Drive 16-bit games, and Game Boy Advance 32-bit games, although it has a bunch of other different emulators on here, including PlayStation, support for TF card extension, support USB 2.0 high-speed transmission, support data interaction, support TV out. We're gonna take a look at all that. We're gonna stop reading this because it's pretty much nonsense. Let's get to the console itself. And as you can see, the Pow Kitty X2 looks like they uh, ripped somebody off. Uh, Nintendo, it looks just like a Nintendo Switch. And before we go into the overall design, let's take a look at this and compare it to the Nintendo Switch side by side. Go ahead and compare it, and as you see, I mean, I don't have the blue and red Joy-Cons, but it looks exactly like it. It is bigger, as you can see. It is a whole lot bigger. As far as thickness, that's pretty close, pretty similar. 
And I, uh, you can tell on the top, which will go through the button layout and everything, there's only two bumper or triggers, whatever you want to call them. There is a video coming soon that I was working on that got put on pause, I just want to let you know, and that is these skins that I got off of Ally Express. And the reason that video got delayed is because I have to put the ones on the Joy-Cons and I didn't want to remove my skull and company, which if you didn't see that video, that link will be at the top of the screen and the description. These are button caps. I didn't want to remove them and it looks like I'm going to have to because even buying damaged Joy-Cons is way too expensive for that. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that video on those Nintendo Switch skins. Let's go into the button layout here. As you can see, it's pretty similar to the Nintendo Switch. You have two analog sticks, which we're gonna go into the quality of those. Actually, let's just do it now. They suck. They are really stiff. They're nothing like the Nintendo Switch analog sticks. I know those have drift on some Joy-Cons, but for me, I haven't experienced that yet. But they are really, really stiff. You can tell that they're really cheap just by using them. That one almost got stuck. You have your, just like your Nintendo Switch, your separate buttons for your D-pad, which I've never been a fan of. I don't know why they decided to go with that. They do that on a lot of Chinese devices. Just give us a traditional D-pad. These don't even come off the system, although they look like they do. It does not remove period so I don't know why they decide to go with this d-pad yeah they start and select here those buttons feel pretty cheap too they are very clickish though and I'm guessing this is a reset button that goes back to the menu I believe it is I believe that's what it did and then you have your action buttons which do occasionally feel like they get stuck there are nothing like the Nintendo switch joy cons or any other good handhold for that matter. They are, I don't know, I, they're a little spongy. And then you, on the top here, you have a volume rocker, you have your on and off, you have your micro SD card, you have your micro HD out, which is kind of kind of cool that they included that. Honestly, you don't see that very much on Chinese devices. And you have a headphone jack there. You also have your right, and your left trigger buttons, which quality control. Apparently it passed. This button doesn't even press in. It does not work, period. I haven't tested any games yet though to see if it actually works, but it doesn't go anywhere. So I can't see it working. So I'm gonna end up having to open this thing and see if I can fix that. On the bottom here, you have two micro USBs. One of them, as it states on here, is probably for an OTG cable. I knew that already. It's for, let me turn that around, it's for controllers and an extra controller. And you also have your DC in. Uh, the plastic itself, it feels pretty hard. It, it's not light. It's got some heft to it. I mean, it's not heavy though. The plastic feels good. I'll give them that. Let's go ahead and turn this on. The one thing I was pretty upset about this is it's not using that normal operating system. I think it's the, is it Dingo or Retro FW? I think it's Retro FW. That would have been nice if that was in here and it's not. It's It looks like it's just a proprietary operating system here. And you got your history uh, and that's pretty self-explanatory. There's all the games that I had played or loaded. And as you can see, that is the back button. And you got your games, you got movies, where you can play movies. This is the file system. And as you can see, that I'm guessing is just the SD card here. And you got your settings, which I don't think that there's much in the settings. You got language, display, themes, which there's barely any themes in here and they're actually crappy. You got this one, which is the best one. You got that. And I guess that's okay. And you got this. That's that's all you got in there. I don't know if you can get other themes, but it doesn't really, I don't believe it, it changes anything else. I mean, this is the same. All it's doing is changing the wallpaper, so therefore it's not really a theme. It's just the background. And as you can see, you got CPS, 
There are some built-in games here that they put. A lot of them are obviously the Japanese versions instead of your American versions. You got FBA, which honestly, I don't even know what FBA is. Obviously, it's another arcade. I'll have to look that up. And now I sound like an idiot. You got Famicom, you got Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, you got Game Boy Color, you got Game Gear, which is funny, they normally don't include that. Oh, oh no, nah, that's that's not true, it has been included on a couple of Chinese devices that I've done videos on, like the LDK game, I believe it was in there. I don't know if it was on the Pocket Go, it might have been on there too, either way, those links will be at the top of the screen. If you've never seen those handhelds before, I have done videos on those. You have the Neo Geo and you have PlayStation and Super Famicom. I decided to go with Mercs. I'm assuming you press yes, yeah, select. You can see my beautiful face. It's not that beautiful. This normally, uh, I think most of them will go on the full screen, but you can change that in the settings, obviously. And as you can see, you can use the analog stick. It does work, but like I said, it's stiff, and at times it feels like you gotta really push it to get it to go in the direction you're going. But the game itself is working. I don't know if I can necessarily get the FPS up here. I don't think there's anything in the settings that'll allow you to do that. Here's another CPS game. And actually a really good arcade game and that's Punisher. Sadly, I never played this in the arcade, but I have played it on a lot of Chinese handhelds. And the Retro Pi, the Retro Pi, Raspberry Pi, it is Retro Pi, the operating system. And this game plays pretty good too. Personally, I don't see any stuttering, any sound quality issues. The speaker in this isn't all that loud. I mean, I've seen smaller Chinese handhelds that were way louder than this. All right, here's a game called Cyberbots, and that was in the FBA. Kind of reminds me of that one game. What what was that? The first time I played it was on the retro bit. It was armed something, and now I can't remember it. God, my memory's bad today. Ah, oh, it seems like it's a robot fighting game. Nice. I never played this in the arcade. And we got Metroid for the Famicom or NES in the States. The game seems to be running pretty good. It's been a while since I played this game. The sound kind of sounds a little slowed up very slightly but as you can see look I'm trying to move forward and the analog stick just keeps the gun up because that it's way too sensitive or I wouldn't even say sensitive I would say it's not really calibrated right and you gotta play Adventure Island and honestly, the sound sounds alright to me in this game. Ah, oh, shoot. Ah, uh, the skateboard. Me. Ah. Now we got the original Game Boy, which is going to be a video about that soon. I picked up one from Ally Express, a modded one with the backlit screen. Or it's not actually backlit; it's a 
one of those new IPS screens. I know I'm getting it completely wrong. Either way, it looks like this. And I've never, I've never played Wario before on the Game Boy. Actually, these Chinese handhelds were the first time that I've ever played them. Playing this game though now makes me want to get a cart for my Game Boy. But as you can see, it like hesitated, and it does seem like it, the button does get stuck at times. But the game works fine, the sound does, it sounds pretty good to me. Alright, now we're up to Game Boy Advance, and as you can see, some of the games that they have in here don't have images, so it'd be interesting to find out how you can actually put images on here. Yeah, I don't, can't recall what the left trigger does in this game. But it's not doing anything. I, there it goes. It is working. It just has no... There's no click. You can't even tell if it's going to work. Yeah, I play one more advanced game and we got Sonic Advance. I think they got these buttons switched. I don't know if there's a way to change the controls. And the image quality isn't too bad for something that's stretching this from the original Game Boy Advance screen. It was one of the reasons why I picked this up because of the biggest screen. I think just the quality of the actual handheld itself, the housing, the buttons is pretty crappy. Let's just go ahead and try Game Gear just for the hell of it. Mainly because you don't normally see this on here built in to these Chinese devices sometimes. I mean, it is on Retro FW. Look, Sonic 3, and it's obviously Sonic Chaos. Uh, I want to say that's just me sucking, but oh, that's hard. Audio quality is good. I've never actually played this game on the original Game Gear, so I can't tell if the game itself just slowed up but it seems a little floaty and that may have been how the game mechanics was originally and you can let me know in the comments down below whether this game see was kind of floaty all right we're now on the mega drive and somebody please tell me what sonic plus 2 is sonic boy i don't think i've ever heard of it it might be a thing i gotta see what that sonic plus 2 is it's sonic 2 but yet it has knuckles in it I guess maybe this is some sort of ROM hack where you can play the game as Knuckles. That's that's kind of cool. Yeah, basically what it is, it's... It's Sonic 2 and you get to play as Knuckles. Does he have any special abilities or he does the same thing Sonic does? Oh yeah, there he goes. He floats. Nice. Sonic Boy is Sonic Jam 6. Oh, Jesus Christ. I guess it's a red version of Sonic and Mario, and it's, it's all messed up, by the way. I mean, unless it was meant to be that way.
Oh, that's weird. That's just all types of wrong. Alright, we got some Neo Geo going and we got Metal Slugs. Metal Slugs. Metal Slug 3. Game seems to be running perfectly fine. Except for the fact that I just died. Oh, I missed the power up. Seeing where I'm not that well versed in Neo Geo, this Shock Troopers looks good. I've never played it before. Looks like it's possibly a run and gun shooter. Yeah, that got that analog stick it just got stuck and would not respond. Complete garbage. I like it. It's kind of like uh what's that game? Got Resident Evil Gun Survivor, which is weird to have on here since it, it I believe it's a light gun game. Tekken 3, there's not many of them. 13 games all together. I don't even know what Suzuki Bakuhatsu is. Contra Evolution, which I played and I, I honestly I'm not that big of a fan of it. I'd rather Contra just stay to the 2D side scrolling shooter. Uh what happened? Ah. Uh, I backed out. That seems a little weird that it's taking that long to load. Not really easy to pop off on the Dukins. And this thing, uh, yeah, this is garbage. This pretty much acts as like your Xbox layout. B is actually A. It's, they just put it like that so it looks like the Nintendo Switch. Oh, I always do that and waste it. I don't remember this in the original game. What the heck? This must be different for the Japanese version. I don't remember the young girl coming out in the American version. I don't even think I'm getting hit.
What the heck is this? I don't remember any of that. That was weird to me. Alright, I connected the uh, PAL Kitty X2 to my PC and it popped up automatically. Here's the USB drive. I did take the actual SD card on. It is a 32 gig. It's some unknown name brand. And you're greeted with the games folder, music, settings, and video. I'm going to save games for last. Here's a settings zip file. I don't know what's in there. And then the system.tmp. I'd like to mess with those things a little later, but for this video, we're not going to go ahead and do that. Let's go in the videos first, then we'll move our way up. And as you can see, here's a comic book splash. go in the settings and we got game icons and I did see this and this is really interesting and as you can see that's one of the game icons in there so potentially I could change out these crappy images for actual good images which might be in another video if you're interested in seeing me design other icons for this please leave that request in the comments down below and I will make another video on that and you also got settings backgrounds here which I didn't even see in the system so I don't know what that's for and desk I actually don't even know what this was either and then you have BG's I haven't seen any of the actual theme images so I was wondering if you could possibly just make a complete theme with uh, wallpaper and the icons that would be kind of interesting to try that I wonder what res is I'm gonna assume that those are the icons that they're using for the games that all hey there goes that game I was talking about armored warriors so I could potentially change the images in here too I'm gonna have to mess around with that if you'd like to see a video on putting ROMs and pictures onto this PAL Kitty X2 leave those in the comments down below as well Looks like they're using an XML file for the pictures and the actual ROMs. And here are the games and here's the different folders. It has an N64 folder in here, which is funny. As you can see, it has Moopin64, but there's no actual N64 emulator on the device itself. So I don't know what that's about. All right, guys, it's that time again. The final word, my final thoughts on the PAL Kitty X2. The overall quality of the device is not all that great. I mean, the plastic itself around feels constructed of a pretty good plastic. It is pretty sturdy. The analog sticks are complete garbage, in my opinion. They do get stuck during gameplay, and they just don't feel that good. They really feel like they're just a analog d-pad i mean honestly in my opinion it just that's all it feels like is you got your up you got your down your left and your right and that's it it just feels really cheap i don't like it i don't even like using it during gameplay i think it gets you stuck and it it doesn't work all that well i'm not a big fan of the nintendo switch d-pad with the separate buttons i would have rather seen an actual just regular traditional d-pad and the buttons they're they're all right they're kind of squishy the left trigger on mine came broken it is kind of cool to see that they did include the the uh, micro hd so you can connect it to your computer via hd and it's not just you know most chinese devices where they put your rgb cables in there something i want to talk about is the actual otg support that's on the PAL Kitty. You're supposed to be able to hook an external controller to it. As you can see, this is the retro bit Sega Genesis controller. I hooked it to here, and as you can see, it does move through the menu. All the buttons, well, all the buttons that should work will work. You can hit A to select, it will load a game. Once you get into the game, nothing works. I haven't seen anybody who's done a review on this actually touch on this and maybe I missed something if you did see someone touch on it please leave that in comments down below 
Uh, at some point when I was messing around with the buttons, I actually somehow, which I haven't seen anybody discuss either, got into the RetroArch menu where I could have sworn I seen a way to map the buttons, but now for some reason I can't get into it. I was messing with the power button and it accidentally came on. I don't know if there's a combination between the power button and one of the other buttons, but I tried everything I could possibly think of. I could not get into it. I even hooked a keyboard to here hoping I can do something and it just, certain buttons would select through the menu, load a game, turn the device off. Other than that, I could not figure out how to map the buttons. So as for now, that's pretty useless. There's nothing in the manual explaining how to map the buttons. I also hooked it to uh, the TV via the HDMI port, the micro HDMI port. I had an adapter from a Raspberry Pi Zero kit that I had. and. As you can imagine, it, it's kind of pixelated. I mean, it does work and it's nice, but it's not as crisp. PlayStation's a little better than obviously your Game Boy. If I figure out a way to map the buttons, I will leave that on my Twitter, so you can go ahead and follow me at Weedeem Channel, and I'll leave an update there and how I did it, or I might even do an updated We Get Technical video. Despite the fact that the uh, quality of the actual construction the buttons the analog sticks is kind of poor the emulation on it seems pretty good i'm not entirely sure why it has n64 built into the memory card the movement 64 emulators there but then when you're on the main menu you can see we do not have n64 it stops at playstation so i'm not entirely sure what's going on there and how i could possibly get the n64 on there so i can test it that will definitely be something in a future video. Like the RG350M, they do have a metal version of that, that's kind of cool. And you also got the Pocket Go 2, I believe. Those are all better options. There have been other Chinese handhelds that have come out after those devices that are way better than this Pal Kitty at its price point. If I think the only reason you would pick this up is if you're looking for a bigger screen. And this screen is definitely I'll throw the actual size of it up on the screen. I'm going to guess it's a 7 inch or an 8 inch. I'm going to be doing some future videos on this. I want to change out these icons. I want to see if I could change out the background. Kind of do a real theme, not the way they had it where it was just changing the background. I want to also see if I can get the N64 emulator on here. And I also want to take this guy apart in a future video, which I will do. I want to see exactly what's in here. I don't know if, if you guys have been following my channel a while back, I talked about taking the, I believe it was the X12, I'll throw it up on the screen, there will be a link to that handheld, a video of that handheld at the top of the screen. I wanted to take that apart and see if I can install RetroPie on it. I also wanted to, there was another handheld that actually busted that I was planning on putting a Raspberry Pi in. And honestly, there might be a chance that I'd much rather do it with this, with the bigger screen, to see if I can do it. But I actually have to learn how to chop the main board and take these controls and wire them to the Raspberry Pi. I'm not that versed in that. If anybody knows any good tutorials on doing that, please leave them in the comments down below but there will be a video on that as well there's going to be several videos on the pal kitty so if you're interested in seeing that don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have any questions on the pal kitty or you want to see any games running on the pal kitty please leave those in the comments down below if i get enough responses on that i will make a video specifically for a list of games that you guys wanted to see running on it. If you like what was contained in this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you thought this video was garbage, a really bad review, didn't answer any of your questions, just a waste of time, you can always go hit that down button as well. If you found this video to be of some sort of value, don't forget to share amongst friends and the rest of your social media. And as always, don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button.